Overthinkers of Reddit, what unlikely scenario actually came true that you were completely prepared for because you are an overthinker? My boyfriend who has zero history of seizures narrowly escaped dying from one because my overthinking led me to break into his house when he didn't answer the phone. My overthinking had begun a few nights prior. He mentioned that he butt his tongue in his sleep and woke up with a bloody pillow and sore mouth but he had no memory of it happening. That for some reason led my overthinking brain to question wow, did he have a seizure and not realize it. He has zero history of seizures, and we had been together multiple years, didn't live together but spent nights together, and I had never seen a hint of a seizure. But for some reason, this stuck in my mind. Fast forward two days. We usually don't hang out in the morning because he likes to sleep in late, but on this day we had an appointment to go see a specific dog at the shelter I was thinking of adopting. He wouldn't answer the phone that morning. I called multiple times before I went to his place, but he never picked up. I started getting a bad feeling but quelled that he's having a seizure thought, because that was clearly so unlikely, meanwhile making an action plan for that very scenario. I got to his house and he wouldn't answer, so in a completely not me crazy girlfriend move, I climbed over his fence. Luckily his door was unlocked. I found him unconscious and unresponsive, lying in his back with the sticky remnants of foam all around his mouth. I jumped into action I rolled him on his side to help curb aspiration, put a pillow under his shoulder to keep him in that position, and called the ambulance. Had I not hopped the fence to get in had I not driven over when he didn't pick up the phone had we not had plans to meet up hours earlier than we usually did he would have been dead by lunch. His kidneys were already shutting down by the time he reached the ER. If he had never mentioned biting his tongue in his sleep, I don't think I would have been overthinking at all. No crazy worries about seizures would have pushed me to go over and find him. Turns out to be a weird brain disease that's bizarrely endemic to New Mexico kind of cerebral cavernous malformations. Several days later, after we got home from the hospital, I got a call from a friend who said the dog, against all odds, was still at the shelter as in the very dog we were supposed to be seeing that day. I had given up hope on getting her, pushed it out of my priorities while he was hospitalized but they had forgotten to take down my 24-hour hold sign on her cage, so no one inquired about her. She's now our miracle dog and is the sweetest animal I've ever owned. My boyfriend wouldn't be alive today if we hadn't made an appointment to meet her. All the teachers at the middle school I taught at knew I was a pack rat and one day a kid split his pants and the school counselor came to me and said M. Arthi Hog Dog, would you happen to have a pair of sweats or gym pants in your truck? Yep. So that the kid spent the rest of the day in a pair of nylon pants I had behind my seat. He is lucky because if he didn't fit he would have spent the rest of the day in a white disposable coverall I had in case I had car trouble in nice clothes. Icing on the cake, it was a student I really liked who was super helpful to other kids and teachers, so it was nice to do something nice for him. I also carried a Swiss Army brand soft side briefcase, yard sale find, stuffed and it had a few of each size of battery. One day Phil Niekro and two Braves players were there for an assembly and Phil's mic battery was dying so I sprinted upstairs to my classroom, grabbed a 9 volt from my bag, then basically rolled across the panel and switched out his battery and got back to the pot avoiding getting on TV news cameras. I am an amateur clarinetist. I played in the local orchestra and the like. My son was in the high school band, also played clarinet. Prior to a football game, at the warm-up area, he called me as I was about to head to the game, saying that someone in his section had a problem with their instrument, so did I have a loner? Now the thing about being a clarinet player is that everyone you know calls you every time they see a cheap plastic clarinet for sale at a garage sale or the like. So over the years, especially when my son was in junior and senior high, when I saw one of these for $50 or $100 I grabbed it. Didn't happen every day, but at the peak of my collection I had a couple of beater plastic clarinets in addition to the pretty good wooden one my son played, 
and Lord knows I wouldn't trust anyone with my good clarinets in BB and A I used in the orchestra. So I grabbed both of these plastic jobs, which actually played okay, and brought them. I pulled the one I thought was the better of the two out of the car and gave it to my son's friend. Meanwhile, he says hey another person ran into a problem. And I got the second clarinet out of the car. How many clarinets do you have? Was my son's question. It was a proud moment. Edit wow, thanks for all these awards and upvotes. It helps confirm I really am bananas. When my wife and I were getting married and looking for a place for ceremony we have found this beautiful but quite remote garden. We were signing the contract for the event and I kept thinking that it was quite remote, so I asked, how much time does it take for the ambulance to get here? I became the laughing stock of both families. My, then future, mother-in-law, who was present at the meeting, literally fell down from the chair laughing. The wedding organizer, remembered it for weeks, telling about it everyone we met. My dad, ended every sentence with, but maybe you need an ambulance for that. My wife was making siren noises, when I was saying something we disagreed on. Every family dinner all the aunts and uncles were checking if the ambulance was present. You name it. The entire package. Still I couldn't get rid of this weird feeling. It would have taken over an hour for the ambulance to get to the garden. After a few weeks I ended up paying a private ambulance to be present at the wedding. Fast forward to the ceremony. As my wife literally walks down the aisle, at the back of the garden I see two paramedics running with a stretcher and my dad squeezing my hand whispering, that's not of your goddamn business, let them to take care of it. What happened was that one of our older guests got a heart attack and almost died at ceremony. Was saved by the private ambulance. Ever since then, when my wife tells me that I'm overthinking, I just do the siren noise. I was once driving on the highway behind a car with a couple of kayaks strapped to the roof. My anxious brain kept saying what if they fall off the car, final destination style. I tried to convince myself that it was an irrational fear, but the anxiety got the better of me and I decided to change lanes and make some distance. About 30 seconds later, cue kayaks, they both slip off the roof and go rolling around the highway. Luckily no one was hurt, but man that did not help my anxiety at all. Edit to address some comments. I figured I was overthinking since I don't know anyone else who gets nervous or avoids driving behind cars with loads, but I see now that maybe my behavior wasn't so weird. Apparently a lot of you have seen falling kayaks on the highway. I don't think this is the same exact incident as any of the ones you guys have described. From comments about how to properly tie down a kayak, I think these were not properly secured, I don't think they were tied to the bumpers. Backpacking, I'm always the overprepared one. To the point I got a bit of a rubbing from my friends. I always have a rather fleshed out first aid kit and a couple really useful things to fix gear when you're out in the sticks. In particular super glue, 50 of parachute cord and a small roll of duct tape. Would you know it, we hiked down the wilderness trail from the Lincoln Trailhead. It's a straight as an arrow old railway bed. At the end is a nice campsite. We show up, sort or stuff out and a couple shows up at our tent asking if we've got anything to fix a hiking boot. The sole had partially peeled off from the heel of the boot. They were hiking out the next morning so it didn't have to be perfect. It just had to last the 7 ish miles to the trailhead on flat ground. I glued the sole back on the boot and held the whole thing in place with a bit duct tape so it would set. Worked like a charm. The whole time I was doing the repair everybody was commenting how handy it was I'd brought super glue with me. I kept thinking to myself. Why would you go deep into the woods without some simple supplies to fix your gear? I was in an abusive marriage. I had started planning a way to leave but had an emergency go right now bag in case it got really bad. It had spare clothes a card to a bank account my ex-husband didn't have access to and didn't know I had, some cash, several weeks of my meds, 
a brief medical history with DR's info in case I was hurt and had to go to a hospital, etc. I hid it in the spare tire wheel space of my car. The top layer was just clothing that I had in some shopping bags. It looked like I had bought clothes without him knowing. Anyway, he found it one day. Luckily, he just took the shopping bag out and got real pissed off. Left everything else. Anyway, I never got to use it for myself, because he got arrested thank God, but afterwards I noticed a friend had the look of being abused. It was pretty clear what was happening. After gently approaching her she acknowledged that she was being abused but didn't feel like she could leave. So I helped her hook up with a domestic violence victim advocate but I also had her change my name in her phone to a pizza shop. I made her a go right now bag for her and put it in my car. 30 days later I got a call for a large cheese pizza with extra sauce. I called 911, drove to her house, beat the cops there, and heard her screaming bloody murder. I knocked the window out and climbed in. Saw her husband with a knife with blood all over it. I just ran and grabbed her. Unlocked the door got her into the car. Had the phone on me the whole time. I had a first aid kit with a ton of wound gauze so I just pressed that in and waited as the husband tried to take out the R window. Finally I told the 911 operator that I was gonna drive down a ways. The cops showed up. Arrested the husband. Took my friend to the hospital. Saved her life and since her home was a crime scene she needed the go right now bag. I keep a generic one in my car at all times. I've used more than one for more than a few women and one for a man. Once you've been through it, you can see it. I never want to be unprepared. Just in case. Edit, thank you for the award. I encourage those who are not using the free awards from Reddit on mobile and spending money to donate to a domestic violence victims advocacy group in your area. Like a women's or men's shelter. Or donate to a violence against women awareness groups that provides awareness resources worldwide and advocacy contacts like, The Pixel Project. Edit, apparently you get free Reddit awards on all platforms now. I did not know that. Thanks for the information. I still recommend donating funds to local advocacy groups or to awareness groups that can get people connected to the right advocacy groups worldwide. I'm Asian, so my default is to overthink, especially when I'm on a field trip slash holiday slash etc. Essentially it's just what if I need X, Y, Z just in case. One time, while I was living in another sea country, I went on a middle school field trip with my mostly white, classmates. Side note, in most C public bathrooms, bidets are the norm, toilet paper is not. But in this particular country, even the bidets are not encouraged to be used. So toilet paper is a luxury during trips. At the hotel we stayed at, my classmates made fun of me for taking three rolls of toilet paper from the hotel's bathroom. They were embarrassed and reported me to the teacher in charge, who told them off for wasting her time. I told them they were going to regret laughing at me but they continued to mock me for overthinking. Cue to the bus trip back and a couple of them had diarrhea and guess who was the only one able to provide enough toilet paper. You bet your ass I made them pay me for toilet paper, per square cause fuck you guys for laughing at me. I always carry two travel toothbrushes and a travel size toothpaste pack of baby wipes and deodorant. When traveling a bit further I also bring a change of shirt, a small towel, some tampons, pads and extra hair bands, even though I can just barely wear mine up. This is all because O grew up as the oldest of four kids and looking after a child 11 years younger makes you prepared. Anyway. I was on a school trip with my master's course to London. It suddenly was pouring it down and one of the girls had a white shirt on and it got see-through. So I pulled out one of my many, many, weird graphic tees and handed it over. To help further I pulled out a small face towel I keep in my bag and let her wipe down. I'm a tall, 5'10", 
and brought girl so I just pulled my coat open and kind of caged in this poor 5-2 girl and looked away as she changed in this makeshift changing room. The shirt was huge on her but it helped keep the cool air off the tops of her legs. Another time I had pre-booked and sorted out my train journey, bought snacks and a portable charger for a short 30 minutes journey, which quickly turned into 4 hours because of an accident and delays and further. I was set and was able to give the family with two kids across the walkway of me some fruit, I had apples and some tangerines, and allowed the kids to use my sketchbook to draw in, it was a ratty old thing. Overthinking and overpreparing can be tedious but worth it when it comes to situations. Years ago my sister was leaving to a friend's house. I was 15 at the time. She saw a creepy dude standing outside our fence. She messaged me and told me not to worry, but I immediately got worried. Our front door had cardboard on the window at the time cause my sister broke it trying to get in the house, so whoever was outside could get in easily. I messaged her again asking if he can get through the cardboard and she said not to worry about it again. I locked the door and got ready. A couple minutes later, I heard the doorknob jiggle. I cannot express how hard my heart dropped. It stopped for a couple of minutes and thought it was over, but then I seen the cardboard bend forward. I practically pissed myself screaming, ran to the most secure room in the house and called my mom frantically. We were both dumbass and didn't call the police, but instead my mom raced home. The man was gone when she got there. One of the scariest moments of my life. Similar thing. My stepdad caught my brother and I smoking weed in the middle of the night, and told us our mother would hear about it in the morning, but he didn't actually take anything from us. I speedily put a dime bag's worth of weed, a super cheap bodega one-hitter, and an old grinder into a box. Hid my nice glass bubbler and the rest of the eighth of weed somewhere else. When my mom woke us up at the ass crack of dawn yelling, I had my stash box ready for her to confiscate got high later that day while they were both at work. EDA, I think my stepdad just overlooked confiscating, he smelled it from outside when he let the dogs out, and by the time he came up to my room we knew something was up and the weed wasn't visible. I know my mom used to smoke, I'm 99% certain he never did, which made it more ridiculous that she wanted to go scorched earth on us. Also, we were both home from college for the summer, so 20 and 19. A year and a half ago, my wife was doing the Susan G. Komen three-day walk, and she was staying in a house that was rented. She had just finished day two, and her body was essentially done at that point. In the middle of the night she woke up with severe sweating and dizziness. She started vomiting and by the next morning didn't feel much better. I get the call can you come take me to urgent care. Oh shit, this is my wife we're talking about. Toughest lady I've ever known, never asks for help with anything. Strong as an ox, and about as stubborn as one too. So when she asks me to take her to the doctor slash hospital, I'm out the door in seconds. I drive down to the house to get her. Before we leave, I remember she told me she vomited last night. Well I'd been there the night before to bring our daughter to see her before she fell ill, and I'd played in the sand at the beach with her with some of the beach toys the house had on hand. So I just grab a bucket in case she needs to throw up in it. We make it to urgent care without incident, but I brought that damn bucket in either way because I'll be damned if something goes down. Sure enough, she gets the urge to throw up while we're there, and wouldn't you know it? The bathrooms were both occupied. Bucket to the rescue. I felt like a goddamn hero. I used to keep a spoon in my purse. This was in high school and my friend put a spoon in my purse one day as a joke. I decided to leave it there, just in case, and my friend thought it was hilarious. It became a regular thing for her to check my purse every few weeks to see if the spoon was still in there. Well. One day I decided to spend some extra cash and get a small strawberry ice cream at the end of lunch. I had already bought it and made my way over to the silverware rack when I saw it, the clean spoon holder was empty. 
with it being the end of lunch on a day when the cafeteria had served chili, all of the clean spoons had been wiped out. I was about to feel very sad for myself, and try to decide if a fork was acceptable for eating ice cream, when I remembered, the purse spoon. After a quick wipe with a napkin, the spoon was clean and ready for me to use. Of course my friend was with me and could barely hold herself together while I uttered aloud my love for the spoon in between bites of ice cream.